the Dornier Anteater, the Dornier 335, the fastest propeller plane in, in, during the whole war. Vertical takeoff and landing capability through pitching the engine. This is basically a short takeoff and landing somewhere in the mid 30s. Extremely innovative designs. Asymmetric cabin and body with this stabilizer missing, not shot off. This is how the plane was designed. This is a reconnaissance plane by, uh, I think this is what is the Blom and Boss. <laughs> Uncle S yeah, uh, Igor Sikorsky invented the, uh, the, the, the helicopter hogwash. The Germans had uh, these helicopters in their Kriegsmarine operational since 41. Sikorsky's helicopters could barely get off the ground at the time. I found a photograph recently of a uh, whole wing of about, I don't know, 20 machines of these parked on the tarmac. But we see, I found a family of probably 20 different machines. The Japanese were given most of the German technology in secret and they experimented with similar machines like the German ones. This is a kind of a interesting flying wing, basically a canard. canard. Exactly, canard configuration with a pushing propeller. And they were probably expecting to get a turbojet engine for here, turbo turboprop engine. This is a French plane that was further worked on by the Germans. Very interesting configuration and the cabin is hid, hidden in the vertical stabilizer. Uh, this V-shaped egg beater type configuration of the Flettner helicopter has never been used since because this was the most stable helicopter that the Germans built and that the Americans tested. Much stable than all of their helicopters. Even to the point, I, I am uh, suspecting that these propellers here are mounted on a lot simpler pitch and yaw mechanism uh, than the normal helicopters. And the reason for the blacklisting of this design by the Illuminati is that uh, a third world nation can easily duplicate this one. But the single propeller scheme that we are using nowadays is a lot more difficult to build because there the mechanism is a lot more complicated. I've discovered many such simple technologies that were blacklisted for once and they've never been used for half a century because this would lower the technology threshold and third world nations would be able to produce this technology. Here the humanity want to yeah. keep it in their hands only. Okay. Turbojet engines, the first turbojet plane flew in 1939 uh, the first British jet flew in 1943 or 4, almost at the time the war ended. This is a Henkel 176 or something. Uh, the Messerschmitt 262 was the first operational fighter plane. I was astonished to, to find in a Tokyo bookstore photographs of the Messerschmitt 262. I said, Jesus Christ, how come the Germans had turbojet planes? How come the Russians never told us? I mean, I lived for 30 years in Eastern Europe and they never mentioned these things. And then you realize how, 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 how nicely the propaganda massages your mind and, 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 and brainwashes your mind. And then I discovered incredible planes, flying wings, strategic bombers that were meant to bomb New York. Unbelievable stuff. This is a prototype. I mean the forefather of all the MiG 15 and up fighter planes. And this is a swing wing, variable geometry, Messerschmitt uh, 321 fighter plane. A variable geometry plane before the war ended. Uh, it took the Allies 20, 30, 40 years to regurgitate what the Germans built before them. And some of the designs have never been put into practice because they are either too effective or too difficult to build. It's not the shuttle that was piggybacked on top of another plane first. They had a pilot plane, a father and son combination. This is a plane laden with explosive. Actually, this is a giant cumulative charge, like 
an armor penetrating charge, but the size of a bomber. And uh, the fighter would disengage, directing the plane at a ship or a factory. In the case of a factory, they would crash the ship along the long line of the assembly line of the factory. And when this cumulative charge explodes, it produces an acetylene torch flame that's probably, I don't want to say half a mile, but probably several, several hundred yards long. And this jet blows away all the machinery from the factory, basically wipes clean the factory floor of all, all machinery. Just one single charge of this plane. Have we ever seen such devices on this side of the... I don't remember. The Houghton brothers produce a family of 20 flying wings from small personal gliders to supersonic flying wings. It's not Chuck Yeager who beat the, first, the, the, the sound barrier first. I mean, many were before him. Up to giant transport or, or, or bomber flying wings. This is a small glider in 38, motorized bigger versions of so many different configurations. I mean, they, if it were not for the secret Illuminati siphoning of, of this secret technology from the Germans to the Americans, Northrop in his designs were repeat, was basically copying, making carbon copies of the Dornier brother, uh, of the Horton brothers' design. This is a flying wing assault glider by the German, uh, uh, this is the Flugfahrt, the, the, the Air Flight Society. And this is a rare photograph of their turbojet flying wing, the Horton uh, six with a brake parachute, secretly examined in a British Air Force base in November 45. This is the propeller version of that plane in a fighter configuration with push, pushing propellers, the Horton 5. This is a glider of the turbojet version. Anybody seen such a craft? This is a Henshaw 132 Freedom Fighter. They didn't have time to put the engine inside, so they, they just strapped the engine on top of the craft. The pilot is lying in a prone position to minimize the air resistance. And these were the craft that they were building in the underground factories in Germany in the last months of the war. Extensive research in uh, turbojet weaponry. The prototype of a Stinger missile, this is a shoulder launch, anti-aircraft, multiple rocket launcher, shoulder carry, uh, and shoulder fire. The Fliegerfaust for low-flying airplanes. This is a ramjet driven, they had also rocket engine driven assault boats, demolition boats, and, and uh, commando boats, both German and Italian. Uh, some more helicopters here in high G maneuvers. Some additional helicopters. Saddam Hussein started building his giant gun that has a caliber of one meter. This is the inside of the gun. The gun itself is probably two meters wide. Yeah, this is the gun. He didn't know. He didn't do his research well. He could have done it much cheaper in a with a technology that you can master in any village foundry shop. But you have to have the German genius. What the Germans did was, uh, this slide is inverted. This is the gun, and this is how the bullet travels. And as the bullet goes successively through these explosive chambers, it makes an electric contact and ignites the chambers behind it, which fire and increase the pressure in the tube and the bullet and the projectile flies faster and faster and faster. And these were built in underground uh, tunnels at 45 degrees inclination and could fire a two meter long rocket depending on the length of the, of the barrel. You can have 20 meters, you can have 50 meters, the longer, the bigger the weight of the craft. 
Yep. as well. 